In this video, let's talk about the bones of the foot, or bones of the foot and ankle. Let's add a bit of tibia and fibula in there as well, right? Because that's how it all works together. So we've got this nice, big, floppy, bony foot model that we can use. I've also been 3D printing, hmm, toes come off this one, <laughs> to give to students to take these away with them. Because it, it really does help if you've got a physical thing and you can look at all the bones, you can see what they articulate with, you can see the, the bony prominences which you can then palpate on your own feet. Um, I know it's a big ask, but if you can, see if you can get a physical model. Spend time with the physical models, with skeletons, with bones when you're looking at these and trying to learn these structures, right? It helps. So what have we got? Well, the hand and the foot are remarkably similar in that we have collections of uh, carpal bones at the wrist, and we call these tarsal bones in the foot. Um, so we have the carpus and the tarsus. We have uh, metatarsals, whereas we have metacarpals in the hand, and we have phalanges and so on. So there are some similarities and there are some differences. The hand is very dexterous. Um, the foot is, is a load-bearing structure um, and they're both structured differently because of that. So what we've got up here, we've got the tibia and the fibula and you can see that at the, at the ankle the fibula is not really a load-bearing bone. It's the tibia that's taking all the load and transferring all the body weight down into the foot, down into the ankle. Now look, we can see the big toe here, the, the hallux. So muscles that move it are of the hallux, hallucis. So this is the big toe, this is medial. And we see there's a lump here and there's a lump here. So two bony masses. And you can palpate these yourselves right now on your ankles. So the, if this is the big toe, then this is the medial malleolus of the tibia, and then this is the lateral malleolus of the fibula. And a number of structures from the calf will curve around here and insert into the, into the foot, holding it up and moving it and that sort of thing. Um, but do you see how, how the, the tibia and the fibula together, and of course they're held together by uh, the ligaments and the syndesmosis holding the two bones together, that those two bones are forming the, the open part of kind of a, of a squared off joint, right? So they're forming a squared off space. So they act together there. Now down in the ankle, We've got the heel, this is the calcaneus, the heel bone. The big muscles of gastrocnemius and soleus insert into here. So your Achilles tendon or your calcaneal tendon inserts into here. And most of your body weight goes into the ground through the calcaneus. So the calcaneus takes most of your weight. Um, the tibia articulates with the talus and the talus forms that hinge joint with the ankle, which also allows a little bit of side-to-side -side movement. Um, tibia, fibula, calcaneus, talus. And they have a very specific, very particular shape to them, right? The builders are still here, banging. This one here that articulates with the tibia it forms this kind of this uh, the, the squared bit of bone that goes into the the space the squared off space made by the tibia and the fibula so there's a but it's, it's kind of wedge shaped and what this means is that at the ankle we have plantar flexion and dorsiflexion right so dorsiflexion plantar flexion but we also have um, inversion and eversion so you invert your foot and you evert your foot. Because of the wedge shape of the talus bone, that inversion and eversion is harder to do when dorsiflexed and easier to do when plantar flex. So, so as you dorsiflex, as you step forward, um, the wedge, 
the talus. It's into that space better, the wedge kind of wedges into it, which makes it harder to evert and invert your foot. But as you plant a flex, the wedge opens up. There's more space either side between the bone and uh, the space between the tibia and the fibula, which means that it's easier to invert and evert your foot. And many injuries of the foot are caused by inversion and eversion. There are a whole bunch of ligaments around here which attach uh, these bones to the, the bones of the ankle and support the ankle, um, named after the bones they attach to. And those ligaments commonly get sprained. And it's very painful, takes a long time to recover from. And it's much more likely that those sprains will occur when plantar flexed because this, this bony joint is, is more mobile, is weaker. Um, so watch out for that. With inversion, because all of these things are held tightly together, the fibula can also fracture. But hey, I should leave that for another video really, shouldn't I? And also other bones along here, which we'll mention in a moment, the metatarsals, they're also more likely to be fractured when landed on an inverted foot um, because the load then goes through the wrong place. It goes through the metatarsal instead of the, the calcaneus. Now, anterior to the talus, we find the navicular here. Navicular, navy-like. So if you take this bone out, it looks like the curved hull of a ship. So that's the navicular bone there. And then we have the cuboid bone, named because it's cuboid shaped. And we have the three cuneiforms. Now the digits are numbered one, two, three, four, and five, right? So the first digit is the hallux, is the big, big toe. So of the cuneiforms, or cuneiform, bones, they're numbered also one, two, and three. So from the, the talus, we have the navicular, cuneiform one, cuneiform two, cuneiform three, and then laterally we have this cuboid bone here. There is a tuberosity on the navicular bone, and see how this projects, so you will be able to palpate this on your own foot, so you can find your navicular. And likewise, do you see this tuberosity here as well? There's a tuberosity on the cuboid bone, so you should be able to palpate that on your foot as well. If you can palpate that, that means you can find your cuboid bone. And of course, as we move anteriorly, we have one, two, three, four, five, we have these metatarsals, making up much of the length of the foot. And look how large that first metatarsal is. That first metatarsal bone is huge. It's really, really big. The fifth metatarsal is the, is the most commonly fractured metatarsal, and as I said, it's from landing on an inverted foot. The weight goes through the metatarsal, and you see how it also has this tuberosity here as well, so you can palpate this tuberosity, this is normal. Um, I fractured my fifth metatarsal, and I had an extra lump, a big hematoma after the bone fractured, and, it, and it, you often kind of get a bit of a spiralling fracture through there as the foot is inverted and you land on it awkwardly. And, and then from the metatarsals anteriorly, we have the phalanges. And don't forget, of course, we have uh, proximal, middle, and distal phalanges for each of the toes, except for the hallux, except for the big toe, which only has two phalanges, just like the thumb only has two phalanges, right? Now the foot is shaped in such a way that it has a number of arches. There are three arches in the foot, in fact. We have this medial longitudinal arch, and the medial longitudinal arch is the highest arch, it's probably the most important arch, um, and it's medially, and it runs longitudinally. And then we have a lateral longitudinal arch, which is a little bit lower, and then there's a, uh, a transverse arch, which is formed by these bones here. So the cuboid and cuneiform metatarsal bones are forming an arch under there, this, this transverse arch. And these arches are held up by the plantar aponeurosis, which runs lengthways, and by a bunch of other um, connective tissues and muscles running around, which help hold the arch up, as well as the shapes of the bones themselves. The importance of the arch is that as you walk or run, you, you load um, the foot, the joints, your body um, with weight, with force every time you strike the ground. Now, if you can 
slow the rate at which that force is transferred across the foot and into the ground, then you reduce the shock of that load, so you reduce the, the shock to other structures in the body. So, so one function of the arches is that as you land, the connective tissues holding the arches up stretch as the load is applied to them, so the weight is, the force is dissipated over time through those connective tissue structures, then through the foot and then into the ground. All right, so it's, um, it's a shock absorbing mechanism. But also, um, there's um, a measure of, of energy return. So as these connective tissue structures get loaded and get stretched, as you step off, some of that energy is returned into your foot. And there are other mechanisms, mechanisms as well, in the Achilles tendon and the calves and all sorts of things. But the arches are about shock absorption and about efficiency of locomotion. So the arches are very important. You can look at your own arches just by, with a bare foot, make your foot wet, step on a bit of paper and look at the shape you leave and if you have a very flat foot if you have very low arches more of your foot will be in contact with the paper um, but if you have high healthy strong arches then you'll only see you know the heel and the balls of your foot and the lateral foot um, leaving a mark on the paper and your toes and what have you and where you have a nice high medial uh, longitudinal arch there'll be no contact with the paper okay so the bones of the foot and see if you can recognize these bones on x-ray from different perspectives. But we have the tibia, the big load-bearing bone, the fibula. Together, they're forming the um, upper part of the joint. They're forming the space into which the talus uh, fits. So the talus goes like this. And they allow the hinging movement of plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. And then we have the calcaneus, the heel bone that you're standing on. Most of your weight goes through. It's the talus that articulates with the tibia, then the talus articulates with the calcaneus. And then we have navicular, cuboid, one, two, three cuneiforms, metatarsals, and a whole bunch of phalanges. The foot, straightforward, important. All right, so in the future, we should probably look at the, um, the ligaments of the foot and how some of this is held together. But how much detail do we go into? Okay, right, bones of the foot.